Hello guys, my name is Redbark Gaming and welcome to this podcast. I am joined by the Krusty Krab. No, this is Patrick. Oh. Yes. How dare you? Uh, well, um, anyways. <laughs> so, um, I'm sorry I didn't upload any videos recently. I'm very ex- busy with exams. I'm still busy with exams. I have three exams left and then I can record more. Yay! Okay, yeah. Patrick, <laughs> you can start now. Okay then, well, after the word of apology, which I accept, I hope you do too. Anyway, so for today, we are going to be recording a podcast, as was mentioned, and the idea behind this is uh, we all, basically, well, both of us wrote down 10 questions on a paper for each other, which will be our topics of discussion. Uh, so we're going to take turns posing those questions, and we're also going to be trying to keep this... A podcast about an hour long on the most. If we're a little bit over an hour, please don't judge us. Um, but yeah, and then if we don't get to finish all the questions, we'll carry them over to the next one. So that being said, uh, would you like to start off with a question? Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, what game are you most excited for and why? Uh, in this year, I'm assuming. Uh, coming out. Okay, coming out next soon. year, I this th- year, some year, in six years. I think <laughs> I'm actually not quite sure. I haven't been reading up a lot lately, but uh, I think I'm actually most excited for a game that's already out, but it's becoming free to play in a few months' time. It's called H1Z1, uh, which is inspired by Daisy. I'm pretty sure you've heard of it, right? Yeah, I don't really like H1Z1. Okay, well care to share why because um it's it's daisy i guess i don't like daisy i don't like there's too many zombie games first and the i heard the loading time is very long okay for it to begin but that's only the pre the early access i think hopefully not the full game it's made by sony right yeah, I think it's no. It's being published by Sony, but it's being developed by another company. Oh, okay. Um, well, you know, from from what I heard, uh, apparently it has quite a nasty free-to-play or pay-to-win module, if I can put it that way. A lot of people are complaining about uh, people buying airdrops and all sorts of equipment, which makes them overpowered. Well, um, yeah, I don't really care. Is it like a pre-order thing? Uh, well, no, actually, well, right now you do pay to get into the early alpha, but in-game you can purchase uh, airdrops and supply packs, which a lot of people are complaining about because it gives you weapons that kind of overpowers you in a sense, and then I- it's pay to win. Uh, yeah, well, um, I don't really like microtransactions, that why <laughs> that's why I'm not really on my phone on games. <laughs> uh, and that's why you hate EA as well. Uh, EA is a big company they will sue me to death so uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well we are being honest here so. uh, yeah <laughs> um, well the game I'm most excited for is probably either Batman that is coming out the 23rd or is that Arkham Knight now yeah, yeah Arkham confused? Knight alright um, and or maybe uh, just go three or Hitman. Okay, Hitman, you say? Mm, the new Hitman. Oh. Okay, they're developing a new one. I actually haven't heard of it. What's it called? Uh, <laughs> Hitman. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. That's a um, very interesting name. <laughs> uh, I th- let me check on Steam. This okay, is why, sure. I, this is why I put my stalker keyboard in so I can search. Yeah. yeah so you can type you without kicking everybody's ear. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, All right. So but you while can, you're you can, looking, you can pre-order it actually now. Okay. Um, Let me check. I'm actually you're talking about the pre-ordering. While we're at it, what do you think about um, the the fact that you can actually pre-download most games nowadays? I I think it's good. I it's um, because. You want the game on the day of release, I guess, mm-hmm. because um, the only thing I'm against is if they they give you free stuff in-game 
if you pre-order like a gun yeah okay i don't, I don't I care what you mean if then. they give you if if they give you a statue or something because that's not in game it doesn't change your experience but if it changes l- the game not everyone's getting the same experience and then some can cheat or something yeah it, you know, it's kind of yeah it, it does become pay to win as well the reason why a lot of companies do pre-orders is it actually funds um, the project in advance before it's being sold, uh, which I guess is necessary for some companies. But then my problem is that, as you mentioned, not a lot of people are able to pre-order the game and the advantage they give for the pre-orderers mm. tends to be a little bit too much sometimes. Yeah. Um, okay then, well, did you find the Hitman game? Yeah, I sent it on Skype. <laughs> All right, then let me read that for you. That is uh, just called Hitman. He was being serious. I thought he was joking. (laughs) So it is Hitman. Well, then you're excited for Hitman, you say? (laughs) Yeah. um, Uh, Okay. We haven't seen gameplay really yet, but it seems like a good trailer, I guess. (laughs) Well, if it's it's like the previous Hitman, it should be good, hopefully. Not, okay, not then, Absolution, well, though. Absolution no. was not a good Hitman game. I actually haven't even played any of them, but I've heard a lot from, I think, Blood Money. No, a Blood, lot Money of people is, Blood Money is the best so far. Okay, and then also with Blood Money, I saw that there's a DLC called, I think, Sniper something. No, that's a oh. game now, I think. Sni- is uh, it a separate Challenge. game now? Yeah. Sniper Challenge, yeah, there we go. And a lot of people are complaining because if you buy it now, I think it's nearly $10. And it only features one mission, which is basically oh, no, high score based. Um, you only get Sniper Challenge if you pre-purchase Hitman Absolution. I didn't okay. pre-order the game, but I got I got the all the Hitman games in a packet, so I got, I have it, but um, I didn't <laughs> pre-order Absolution. <laughs> So. Okay then, so I guess they wanted to let more players have it, even though they didn't pre-order it. Okay, would you like to move on to the next question? Um, uh, we must. We should work on a game. Don't you think? Like, but what okay. kind of game? Mm. Well, um, I think like uh, the first thing wise. that comes to mind. Okay, development-wise, th- the first thing that comes to mind when you talk about game development is what is the current market like? And um, a lot of people are developing these daisy type games, as we, as we said earlier, you know, like H1Z1, Rust, The Forest. Now, the problem with that is, um, since there's too many of those type of games, a lot of people actually will rather buy the larger games or the games made by larger companies. So you're not going to get much of a market for it. Yeah. Well, the so the only market I really see is um, games with great graphics. In a sense, yes. <laughs> because it's... <laughs> but... Yeah. yeah. If, you, if you go to top sellers, you'll see, well, um, GTA V... And Payday, which is, which has okay graphics, and Arma 3, Game of Thrones. I don't know what Game of Thrones' is gra- graphics are like. Uh, it's okay, but I mean, the graphics are a waste for a terrible game like that. Sorry, developers, I didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, I see it's a little not the best. But Witcher 3 is also a great game. Yeah. Have you downloaded Witcher um, 3 yet? It's actually nearly done. It's got about three gigabytes left, but you know, as most, well, not, not a lot of you do know, but uh, we live in South Africa, so uh, welcome to v- some of the slowest internet connection speeds in the world. <laughs> <laughs> right then. Yeah. Um, so just based on what you said about graphics, I'm actually not sure because I, I personally feel that um, it's, it's not always the graphics that appeals to it. I think the reason why GTA and The Witcher and Payday and stuff is on top of a list, I think it's more gameplay-wise because I think... I'm, I'm not sure about Payday too, but I know that other games do feature open worlds. And that's actually one of my questions here. Let me find that quick. Is um, Yeah, there we go. It's here. So since DayZ was released and became popular, um, a lot of... well. Just about all of the modern AAA games 
are moving to giant open worlds with crafting and collecting systems. You know, like you also get in, uh, what's a zombie game called? Dying Light, there we go. So I, I think it's mostly the open world and the freedom to explore and do different things that, that appeals to the gamer. I still don't like that, <laughs> Daisy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, people are going to sue me or something because I don't like Daisy, but I don't like Daisy because the control scheme is difficult. But right. I, I do own Daisy, but I don't, I don't ha know how to get into it because um, when I got into the first server, a zombie killed me instantly. So <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's my, that's my introduction to the game. Um, and it was laggy because of my internet, okay. probably. And yeah. um, when I got into a server with like 200 ping, I, I tried to actually get into my inventory and I couldn't get into my inventory. And then um, I pressed E and stuff. And I don't know what the button is now because I played it a long time ago. Uh, but um, I got into my inventory and then okay. I had like a water bottle or something. And that's all I got. <laughs> okay, so a, a lot of people have been complaining about exactly the same thing. They say so you pretty much you spawn, someone arrests you, takes everything you've got, kills you, and that's the cycle of life in Daisy. Yeah, they right. talked. To the, the first person that came to the E3 PC Gaming Expo was the developer of Daisy, and he he, he was talking about the early access stages of um, Steam and how it works. Okay. And he said something like, um, he isn't working on it anymore, so all the bugs are still in the game. Oh, okay, that's, that's not good. Mm. Um, is that the lead developer? or Because I'm pretty sure Daisy um, was developed by multiple people. Yeah, it's the, it's the um, I think it's, it's a modder of Arma 2 or something. Okay, yeah. And he was on, yeah, he, I think it's a, it's a small group of people. Let me yeah. just check. Um, Daisy developer. Do you have any questions? <laughs> uh, yeah, I've actually got plenty to still ask. So while I'm listening to the clicky sound on your keyboard, apparently your keyboard doesn't take it away. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I wanted to ask you, you know, uh, your opinion about photorealistic graphics, because I have heard that a lot of people complain about it actually... Uh, tending towards what they call the uncanny value, where it becomes so real that uh, it's kind of disturbing in a sense. How do you feel about it? I, I feel it's pretty cool since we are moving into virtual reality slowly yeah, um, because okay. um, scary games get scarier because of because yeah. realism and um, it, it gets cool. Have you seen the Unreal Engine 4 um, realistic simulator thing uh, the photorealistic rendering yeah. demo Th yes I have seen it and it is quite creepy to be honest yeah well imagine um, that with VR I think someone did that actually and then you feel like you're actually there yeah and, and you know I think it also makes games a lot more immersive um, in the sense that when everything you know in front of you looks so real then it's hard to distinguish it from you know reality in a sense yeah. I see that AZ developer is just by one guy called Dean Hall. <laughs> well, then that one guy is stinking rich because uh, from what I heard, they sold several million copies of the game. So well, he's, yeah. <laughs> his, his pockets are stuffed. <laughs> hey, Daisy developer, can you share some of us? We're poor. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Uh, do you want to throw out a question again? Or shall I? Um... Uh, I can. Um, what do you wh What do you think is the next uh, big VR headset since we were there? <laughs> well, um, uh, as many of you guys know, Facebook did buy the Oculus Rift company, <laughs> and <laughs> you know if they bought it, I'm pretty sure they've got big plans with it. So I think ads, uh, a lot of ads, <laughs> <laughs> probably a lot of advertisements. But um, I in my opinion. Uh, I think, have you heard of the Virtuix Omnics? No. 
Okay, so it's basically it's a little round table thing you stand on. I don't know if you can call it a table. Oh yeah, that thing. Uh, you strap yourself in, and as you move, and your feet slide across it, the character moves as well. Now, I've seen people pair that up with uh, Oculus Rift um, DK2, as well as actually the sensors Half-Life. you put on your fingers. I'm not sure they've, what they're called. They've played Half Life Two on it. Right, I haven't seen that. I think I saw Battlefield 4 or something. Um, but basically the idea behind it is that it's um, it's, it's very immersive, but uh, with all the wires and nonsense, it kind of tends to be in your way. So uh, I'm predicting that they're going to create a more compact system, perhaps something based on uh, infrared cameras that tracks your movements, nearly like Kinect, but just a lot more accurate, obviously. Yeah, I see... Um they have shoes that come with it. With a Virtue Exomnix? Yeah. It's probably specially designed, so... Uh, that actually does raise a concern, because what happens if those shoes get worn out? What do you do next? Or you get... Or your feet grow bigger. <laughs> oh, your feet grow bigger. Like a hobbit. But I don't know where in your... In your... <laughs> in your living room your Omnix is going to fit, because it's going to be in front of the TV, of course. <laughs> and then it's going to be <laughs> a lot bigger. But you, but you know, one of the positive sides of, of these virtual reality equipment is, if you think about it, it's going to help people become more active in a sense. Yeah, that's true. It's like a weight loss program, so I'm playing video games. That's like a dream come true, hey? <laughs> no, that's, that's, called, that's called the um, Connect. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay, then. So... Um, Shall I throw out the next question? Yeah, if you want to. Okay, so uh, as we recently read an article, I'm not sure if it was a hoax all along, but a lot of people seem to take it seriously. Uh, Steam proposed the idea that they uh, that they want to become a self-publishing company for developers. Now, what that means is that the developers no longer even need to go through a process like Greenlight. Instead, they just throw the game on Steam and set a price tag. Uh, how do you feel about that? What do you think it's going to do to the market? A lot, a lot, a lot of crap is going to come onto Steam. Uh-huh. Yeah, if if that even happens, but um, it there there's going to be a lot of crap because if you go onto the, if you look at the game, uh, game maker studio uh, workshop, yeah. you'll see a lot of crap. <laughs> Right, the, the, in my in my opinion, uh, the workshop is meant to be full of crap because, uh, and, in, and when I say crap, please don't take it offensive. I mean, everyone starts somewhere. I also used to make a lot of nonsense, but what I like about the yeah, workshop the is... is they, yeah. they, they think it's good. It's a great game, and everyone in the world is going to play it, some of them, yeah. like children, like, um, what was that, T, a, T-Man or whatever. No, 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 it's um, A-Team. <laughs> 18 something I remember I'm, yeah, I'm okay with the fact that you posted it on the workshop because it remains a free game and you do get valuable input from it so that's fine but what I didn't like is the fact that a lot of people try to place those games on Steam Greenlight and um, Steam is not an easy platform to get on especially not if your first two or three games so uh, pe- people do want quality and that's one of the issues I have with people posting their first games on green light I have watched a video of the guy that found the bug in your game <laughs> right <laughs> yeah and um, I, it, it I, was I, I just wonder <laughs> how many people actually saw it and they didn't they didn't want to say anything well um, in the community uh, of my game there's actually three screenshots from people, I think it's from the same person though, uh, where we posted those screenshots of the levels being lit up completely and I thought that uh, his death counter was at about 6,000 so, so I thought that the engine might have glitched out um, but he, he didn't tell me why it happened so I, I was really appreciative of a guy who, who sent me the feedback you know, and said please fix this because it was uh, one heck of a major bug. I mean, that was game ruining in a sense. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so, would you? Yeah, go for it. Um, what do you think of Mirror's Edge Syndicate? Right. So, um, you told me about it. I think about two days ago, or was it yesterday? I'm not sure now. 
Have you searched it or not? not? Uh, I did actually go look into it. I checked the trailer or two. There wasn't much gameplay revealed yet. It was just kind of a trailer that was made from in-engine footage. And um, the first thing I noticed was that it looks really great. Like the graphics are amazing in a sense. Um, but uh, unfortunately, uh, I wasn't much of a major fan of a first Mirror's Edge game. I did play it for a bit, but... Uh, it wasn't really as wow as many people made it out to be. Once again, everyone's tastes do differ. So, but how do you feel about it? I can't wait <laughs> because <laughs> um, I finished Mirror's Edge um, twice or something, and I just liked everything about it. But I see they get they have now they have people that actually do parkour for a living to come into the studio and actually do stuff. Oh, so they kind of record their movements? Yeah. It's probably for animation purposes. Like, I've seen a lot of game studios, especially the larger ones, uh, where they hook these sensors up to people in a skinny suit, if I can call it that. They look kind of funny. But anyway, it records their movements and then somehow processes it into a skeletal animation to which they obviously apply an object later on, but it seems to work really well. Like um, Star Citizen. The, I don't know if it's indie game or not. Star Citizen. I, I'm pretty sure Star Citizen was actually a 2D game. I might be getting confused. There's way too many games nowadays. Let's quickly check. Right, so Star Citizen. Oh no, it does seem to be a See Star Citizen. Again, it's a 3D game. Yeah, there we go. Mm. Uh, that's I see a lot of spaceships and stuff. Ah, oh, there we go. There are humans in here as well. So I haven't read up on it, but they probably also used uh, those animations. Yeah, at the at the PC gaming um, expert E3, they showed a thing of the developer of Star Citizen who who was talking to a camera and he was um, showing how they are recording their movements with the motion tracking suit oh, and stuff. I see. Do they also track their facial movements? Yeah, they had a ca they had like a thing that went around their necks and then three cameras showing at their faces and then oh, okay. it, yeah. I'd one like to pull like a, a funny motion face. Sensing thing. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, when I said one day I'd like to pull a funny face and put it in a video game. <laughs> Yeah. Okay then, so I'm going to cross this question out that I did pose, so do you want to throw out the question, or...? Um, can I tell you about the 4chan thing from yesterday? <laughs> oh yes, yeah, please do. <laughs> okay, so, um, uh, not everyone knows, but um, <laughs> yesterday I, someone posted... I, I okay, the day before that I gave all my cre trading cards on Steam to a guy so that he can buy Payday 2 for himself because he's a, he's a good friend. And um, <laughs> so then he tells one, he, he brags at one of his friends that I gave him trading cards and stuff. And then his friend is a troll and then he said on 4chan that I am some kind of rich dude that gives out games for free, go f ask him for games and friend requests. I got 102 friend requests. Right. <laughs> wow, you seem very popular. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, just for clarification's sake, for those who don't know, uh, 4chan is a, it's a discussion uh, website, right? Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> now you know, if you ever give out free games, make sure you don't give it to someone who has trolls on his friend list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, and so we all get these crazy experiences. So I'm assuming you had to decline all those friend requests? Yeah, and just the, I reported the 4chan post and the 4chan post then died out. So, yeah. Great, so now you are saved. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you felt like you were in the spotlight for a few hours. Uh, <laughs> I wondered, what did I do on Twitter or something? <laughs> Why am I okay. getting this? Um, so basically, I recently saw a video 
uh, which was very funny to watch. I, I'll try and leave a link in the description if I remember. I always tend to forget, don't ask me why. Uh, but it was a video made about uh, what will happen if Microsoft buys Minecraft. Now the funny thing is that was posted about I think a year or two ago and then eventually Microsoft really did buy Minecraft so it was quite funny to see but um, what, what do you think Microsoft are planning to do with a game? Um, I saw on the the um, the magazine, the South African NAG magazine, um, I saw that uh, they are adding a story mode uh -huh. to Minecraft. Okay. I don't know what they're going to do. <laughs> that is actually very interesting. So let's see if we can... Okay, I'll read up about that a bit later, but I, I never knew that. They never said anything about the story, but they said it's going to come to Minecraft. I don't okay. know if it's going to be exclusive to Xbox One or something, but yeah. The thing that I fear is that Microsoft might be planning on also adding microtransactions. Because if you think about it, um, they bought Minecraft for, I think, $1.2 billion, if I'm not mistaken. Two billion. Uh, two billion, there we go. Okay, so it's even more. And if that is a lot of money. So th that makes me wonder, how do they plan to actually still get profits from the game that they bought. I mean, if you think about it, they'll need to get at least two billion from it to just uh, reach equilibrium, if you compare it that way, before they can start generating profits. Yeah. So hopefully that's not the start of microtransactions. I mean, I don't play the game anymore, and I'm pretty sure you don't either, right? No, I play it every day. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, not really. But um, imagine what kind of uh, microtransactions. Like, for 50, 50 dirt, you can buy it for $5. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, we'd like to discuss microtransactions, but to listen to the discussion, you need to buy a $5 DLC. <laughs> <laughs> to access right. the start menu, please buy this. <laughs> to create a new world, pay $2. <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't happen. To add sound, but <laughs> <laughs> oh, that actually reminds me. There's a flash game. I don't know if you've played it. It's called um, Upgrade Completed. I think there is about I think two or three of them in the series. Um, but basically, you start out of literally just a spaceship and you kill enemies and you know you get money for it. But then you gotta buy the menu. You gotta buy the um, <laughs> sprites. You gotta buy the textures. With real money. No, 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 in-game money, obviously, it's so a it's, spoof of microtransactions. So, like, so it's like DLC Quest. It's a little bit like that, except it's, it's I can say, DLC on a much more extended level. Like, you literally got to buy sounds, um, the menu, oh, okay. you got to buy the upgrade screen and all sorts of nonsense. It's really funny to play. So. Yeah. I was on Game Jolt yesterday and I bought, uh, I, I mean, um, I downloaded the game. Goodbye, New World. It's a Minecraft thing, but the oh, st yes, yeah. story is really good. You should actually play it on your channel. Right, I did download Goodbye, New World, and I did actually start a Let's Play. But then um, there's one place in the game where you enter a cave, I think, yeah. and I couldn't find out where I'm supposed to go. I couldn't find any walkthroughs either. So then how did you finish um, Amnesia? <laughs> <laughs> because Amnesia is a bit more of a straightforward experience, I guess. Uh, me and my sister finished Amnesia, the machine for pigs. I'm not going to show her the dark descent because it's scarier. Okay, well, the thing is, uh, with a machine for pigs is... I I'm going to be frank with you, uh, it was terrible. To, to me, yeah, that was, really actually put me off from the series because... What happened is the Chinese room. If you've ever played Dear Esther, you'd know what I'm talking about. The developers were called the Chinese room, and uh, Dear Esther actually had a great story, but it was literally three or four hours of just walking around. You couldn't interact with anything while listening to a story being told. Now, the problem is they're great level designers, so uh, Frictional Games hired them to design most of um, a machine for pigs. And didn't, the they mod, is, didn't they mod the game? Um, it's actually, as far as my knowledge goes, it's based on a newer engine than uh, it's than Amnesia: The Dark Descent was made. So, but basically, the problem is the Chinese room did most of it, and since they're known for just creating these visual walking novels, 
uh, they removed a lot of elements from the game. Like I remember when I was playing a machine for pigs, I, I could hardly really find anything to pick up and throw around. You know, it felt like a dear Esther ripoff. Yeah, I, it was like um, I, w- I felt like I could pick up anything, and then I tried to pick up the bed, and it didn't work. I, I mean, yeah. the <laughs> not the bed. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Um, like a barrel didn't yeah. work and stuff like that. Yeah, you see, a, lo- a lot of the game was static, so that's what I didn't like about it. Mm. I, I, um, did, I did like a teddy. I did hug teddy a lot of the times, but that was... There was a teddy bear? Yeah. How did I miss a teddy bear? It was like five. Oh no, I missed Mr. Teddy. <laughs> How can I sleep with this guilty <laughs> conscience of mine? <laughs> all right, then. So, um, also, while we're on that topic, um, did you see that Frictional Games will be releasing a new game this year? It's called Soma, I think. No. Okay, so it's basically. I don't think the Chinese room is helping, and I'm <laughs> kind of glad for that because uh, let's be honest, we didn't like that that much. No offense, but um, so it's it takes place in space. So it might have been uh, how can I say, kind of encouraged or. Uh, inspired by uh, what's that space game that's like Outlast what's it called um, um, like Outlast um, uh, the Alien Isolation Alien, yeah. there we go so uh, I feel like it might have been inspired by that or it might have been the other way around but it it looks like it could be solidly scary you know aliens and stuff what what do they just make scary games <laughs> uh, f- as far as my knowledge go, um, goes fictional games released only horror games so far. It's uh, three Penumbra games. Can't remember their names. Uh, Amnesia 1 and 2, two which was terrible. And now, now they're releasing Soma. So. Um, and they made Penumbra. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's, yeah so they made the Penumbra series. So. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, <clears throat> any... Wait, do you want to ask a question? Uh, okay, sure. Okay, so um, b- basically I got involved in quite a large debate and obviously uh, when I debate I try to keep it more mature but you get these kids who just start swearing like mad and that was one of them. But um, it was a debate about, you know, engines for creating games and this guy said, uh, if you use Game Maker to create your game, it's not impressive. If you write your own engine from scratch and make a game on it, then it's impressive. Now, I beg to defer, because let's be honest here, the guy who's playing your game is not going to look at the engine it's made on and say, well, I don't like this. They look at the final product. So, in my opinion, if you can make the type of game you want to make on an engine that works really quickly, like Game Maker, then it shouldn't affect how people play and see your game. How do you feel about it? Um, well, <laughs> yeah, um... The thing is, people people look at the game, and they assume it's Game Maker if it's like a not not if it's two D and it doesn't have a top down thing like um like a, what's it what's that other crappy engine um the construct no 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 um <laughs> RPG Maker oh there we go <laughs> yeah RPG Maker is crap um. And or FPS creator, but uh, <laughs> um, yeah, but people will like see tiles in a game, and they will yeah. assume it's Game Maker. Um, if if you see other stuff, they will assume it's something else. Like people assume that Gunpoint was another was a it um, was a in-house engine, but it's actually made in Game Maker. Yeah. And Game Maker see, and Gunpoint is a good game. Yeah, I, I mean, I think the reason why a lot of people frown upon programs like Game Maker is um, when anyone starts out of game development, it's generally something equivalent to Game Maker. In most cases, it is actually Game Maker. And the problem is that most of the games that come out in Game Maker, due to a lot of people being new, are actually terrible games, and therefore people get this mindset that. If it's Game Maker, it's bad. But then if you look at something like, you know, what was it, Hotline Miami? Yeah. That that was one of the best selling indie games, and it was made on Game Maker, but it was just a team of professionals. I think it's one... 
a few guys actually that made it, right? Yeah, it's, it's a small team as far as my knowledge goes. Okay, so what is your um, favorite game studio? Game developers? Okay, um, I tend to forget the name of the developer. Um, I think it's called, if I have to say my favorite developers of all time, it would be Wild Shadow, uh, the creators of Realm of Mad God. But if it has to be my current favorite studio, I would say Rockstar Games, because GTA V is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Mine is actually Devolver Digital. Um, as far as I... Devolver Digital, didn't they make Hotline Miami as well? They are actually publishers, but they publish oh, yeah, good on. games. Oh yeah, okay, so they published that. They published, I think, Stacking as well, or am they I They published Oli Oli, Love Trousers... Expand the bros. Okay, so they did publish a lot of stuff. Hotline Miami 1 and 2, Bro Force, a lot of stuff. Yeah, you know, you know talking about publishers now, um, the problem with Steam Greenlight and also game development engines becoming so much more accessible is that a lot of, um, you know, a lot of people can make games nowadays due to the accessibility of the engines. And... The problem with that is a lot of new games are coming onto Steam every day and I noticed that it it does drive a lot of traffic away from your game. So um, for future reference, you know, I think I'm going to be selling my next game or two through a publisher actually to see if um, I can generate more sales that way. Which publisher do you think if you're going to do it? Well, you know, while you were talking about Devolver Digital, it did come to mind that I might be using them because a lot of games that are published by Devolver Digital are actually 2D games and indie games. So. Yeah. There's another studio, uh, Heavy Bullet, no, not Heavy Bullet, um, what's it called? Something with, uh, um, it's Unlimited Ammo, I think. Something like Ammo. Okay. Um, which also does... Um, a lot of indie publishing. Okay, uh, uh, obviously before I publish, I'm going to look into uh, all the possibilities and opportunities to make sure that I don't get the wrong publisher. <laughs> yeah. Not EA, not EA, please. <laughs> uh, I saw uh, a good game on the Xbox 3, I mean the Xbox One. Um, no, 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 the, not on the Xbox. <laughs> uh, exposition, and it was called Unraveled. It, Unraveled, that okay, looks like that's an, that's an indie game um, okay. where you are a, like a sack boy kind of thing. And you, okay. if you run, you, un, like, you know cotton? Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, that. and you unravel. With oh, okay. While while you are unraveling, you can use the rope to get around things. Like say, oh, okay. You you make a bridge with your rope. Yeah. And then you um, climb over the rope and stuff. Okay, it's that's cool. actually a very creative idea. Can I send you a link to the images? Sure. Let me quickly check it out. Uh, yeah. Don't worry. I'll I'll edit the video so that you can see some of the images too as well. All right, yeah, I'll, I'll try to remember to edit it properly as well. Uh, okay, so uh, when you mentioned the sack guy, I actually thought um, it was a little bit like, uh, what's it called, Little Big Planet, but it it looks much different. The graphics are actually very nice as well. Yeah. Oh, um, okay, that looks amazing. You should look at the trailer. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we'll probably pop the trailer in the video as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, wonder, I wonder what music I'm going to put in the video. <laughs> if probably, uh, I got an idea. Let's put some Justin Bieber music in the background. <laughs> that way we'll never get views. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, actually while we're on that topic, I know it doesn't really involve anything with uh, technology and stuff, but uh, I recently read an article and I actually saw a video of it. Uh, where Justin Bieber was uh, busy touring in some country, I'm not sure where, and he was living in a small little apartment. Uh, it's about three, I think, three stories high or so on. Yeah. And uh, down below his balcony, there were a lot of fangirls, you know, screaming, and they want pictures of him. 
and then he came out and he spat on one of them. Now, y- you think their initial reaction would be something like, you know, oh, go away, we, you know, drop your fangirliness, but yeah. <laughs> it looked more like they were asking him to spit on them as well, so... <laughs> I mean, that's just disgusting to think that someone would be so obsessed with a pop star. Yeah. Uh, no, so. Um, it's like, I'll drink your spit. <laughs> 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 okay, then, you throw out the next question. Uh, okay. Uh, um, uh, story-wise, what is your favorite game? Okay, so story-wise, it's actually, believe it or not, it's a mobile game. It's called Juniper's Knot. Uh, What was that? I had a squeaky noise. I just um, had a heart attack when you said mobile. Okay. (laughs) Well then, um, it's a mobile game. It's called Juniper's Knot. I don't know if you've heard of it. I think when I got it, it was free. Uh, I think it still is free, hopefully. It's a visual novel, actually, and it's about... Uh, I think it's roughly an hour long, so it's not very long, but it's definitely the most gripping story and best resolve I've ever seen in any game, if you can call it a game, you know. Mm-hmm. Right, and then uh, for you? Oh, um, mine is Presentable Liberty. Okay, wait, I think I saw someone play it. It's, it's a cookie clicker inspired game, right? No. Basically, you're locked in a room, and then people send you messages with um, paper, and then you get... It's an hour long, but the story is very compelling, but you have to read all the notes. It's Okay. This, I, I cried at the end. <laughs> well, then really, that is... I'll link the, the game in the description. Okay, uh, I'm quickly checking out because when you mentioned Presentable Liberty... Ah, there we go. Okay, I was confused because the developer made a game called Exoptable Money. And that's where I got confused. I'm the uh, same developer, but that was a Cookie Clicker inspired one. But uh, I'm, I'm probably going to be doing Presentable Liberty uh, on a playthrough. So, thanks for that. You should play video game the game. <laughs> <laughs> right, that sounds uh, very compelling. <laughs> Have you played uh, it? It's it's 15 seconds long. <laughs> oh, oh, it's just, yeah, it's called The Game. Um, That was made for the, I think, Indies versus PewDiePie Game Jam, right? I don't think so. Okay, because I found it somewhere there. It might have been, well, whichever way it goes, it was probably the shortest yet most awesome game I've played. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, it was on the PewDiePie Game Jam. Oh, there we go, okay. My knowledge is undefeatable. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> that would be um, like a war cry or something. We've been recording for forty-three minutes. Oh, that actually time is really flying quickly. I must <laughs> say, my voice is starting to kind of become a bit more croaky. I don't smoke, by the way. Don't get any weird ideas. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna cross this out. Okay, should I? Oh, by the way, why? Question? How how are yeah, you recording for... underwater, under a rock? Um, I'm in Sandy's dome, you know, where there's no water. Oh, uh, you have really good um, reception through that um, that uh, bubble water bowl thing. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> it's the amazing technology of Bikini Bottom. By the way, there's one thing I don't understand. How can there be a lagoon uh, in Bikini Bottom, which is basically under the ocean? It's It's goo. It's like oil. Okay, so it's oil. Yeah, it's why, it, that's why it's called Goo Lagoon. Right then, and also, you know that time when I, when we stole balloons and we had to escape from town? Uh, me and Spongebob, uh, and we stole a balloon. I, I don't, don't know if you've seen I, that I don't yet. really stalk you, but okay, yeah. Okay, but anyway, we stole balloons in one of the episodes and we had to escape from town. And then while we were outside there, we made a campfire underwater. I, I only just... Run, I. Yo, I yep, can't believe it's, this. It's, it's wow. amazing, right? We're wizards. Oh. Sure. Okay, so <laughs> while we're on this, uh, many of you guys know uh, we are uh, Let's Play channels, both me and Red Bar Gaming. Um, but Who's how me? we get is, uh, me is me. 
and you is you. But me is not you and you is not me. Oh, okay. <laughs> I hope that clarifies everything. <laughs> anyway, um, so, you know, we've got Let's Play channels. Um, but one thing I have noticed is that a lot of people, and when I say a lot, I mean a huge amount of people are creating new Let's Play channels uh, nowadays. And, yeah, that does make it quite hard to get a fan base or subscribers. But how do you feel about all these new people creating channels but they don't really seem to actually have anything special to offer or you know they don't sound very inspired to make videos how do you feel about that um well they they they're, they're mostly children <laughs> uh, yes <laughs> yeah i've noticed that squeakers <laughs> as we call them um and uh most of them just scream and make your ears go boom. And yeah, most of the subscribers in are family based and <laughs> And um, also a lot of them get bought on websites. Get what? They get bought on websites as subscribers as well. Oh yeah. They buy stuff. But um what I try to do is I I try to be energetic and try to edit my videos. Um, more quick and fast, like a vlog style thing. Okay. And only take the funny bits out. And I record for like three hours long. What do you do? Okay, well, um, I try to form my channel based on a uncut kind of way. So uh, when, I, when I do my videos, I try to keep talking, you know, to be talkative and uh, while, while I'm playing. Hard. Which is kind of hard because you're talking to basically no one at that stage. Obviously, when you upload it later, it feels better. But um, So I try to keep my videos uncut so that I don't just get this random compilation of me screaming and yelling. Um, I guess it's mostly inspired by Markiplier because he's the first YouTuber I saw that actually has videos that stimulate you more intellectually. Um, so, yeah. How fast is your internet in Bikini Bottom? In Bikini Bottom, we've, well, we basically live next to the Seacom cable, so we tap all the internet out. <laughs> yeah, you probably have Wi-Fi with a connection up on the island, eh? Uh, yeah, up on the island, yes. We've got this huge antenna where we get internet from. Uh, by huge the way, <laughs> yep, huge. <laughs> um, while we're on that, uh, I read an article recently. You know the Seacom cable uh, basically provides all the internet for South Africa in which we live? Um, so uh, I read an article and uh, we are currently only using 5% of the full of, of uh, capacity of that cable. Um, the other 95% is going to waste because our country aren't actually uh, wielding it properly. That's why our internet is so slow and expensive. Bloody South Africans. Bloody South Africa. Amen. <laughs> right, so uh, uh, let's see. I've got one, two, three, four, five questions left. How many do you have left? I have. I can't count. Can you count for me? Okay, so it's one, three, eight, two. Uh, <laughs> no, um, I don't have any <laughs> more questions left. You can. <laughs> okay, so I've got a lot. I actually wrote my questions down in a kind of a logical order, if you can put it that way. Um, but I've just been asking them from a random order, so I can't stick to what I plan. Okay, so let's go to indie games taking over AAA games. Now, what I wanted to know is uh, the indie games market is growing at an enormous rate. Um, AAA games are still going strong, but if you look at the amount of indie games being released, do you think that indie games will ever become bigger than AAA games? Well, since we did say um, before this that the publishers are that, that there are publishers that um, publish indie games more, there is a bigger chance for that happening. But um, I think AAA games will still be in their Microsoft. Um, Stuff because if you look at it, um, games the triple A games get better, and some of the content even it is even on the disc, you don't even have to buy yeah. it later. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's true. 
<laughs> right, so um, the other thing I was going to mention is, you know, if indie games taking over triple A games, uh, you know, engines are becoming a lot more like like production is becoming faster in most engines nowadays, and the issue that comes along with that is indie games are also picking up on their scale. So, um, what I mean by that is that. Uh, indie games are becoming larger and larger and more complex every day, which means that if you don't stick to, well, if you don't grow and become larger as well, you're eventually going to fall out. So, uh, but basically, what I mean by that is, if you look at a lot of indie developers are making these huge open world uh, survival games because of the engines we have nowadays, it's very easy to do that. So it's it's becoming harder to stay in the market. I I designed a game yesterday with a cool <laughs> on 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 your Unreal Engine. Um, I designed a game that um, you have to you are in a room, then you get a yeah. key to open the door, but you have to crash the room stuff to get the key, and then you go outside, okay. and then you see your room is actually just a big window, so um, people oh. are looking at you, and when you get out, someone will say to you. Um, <laughs> We've been looking at your. Um, uh, uh, we've been looking at you lately, and we <laughs> we think you should jump off this, and then you'd fall into another room, and then the room closes, and then um, a bunch of puzzles are happening. And I think that's actually a good idea for a game. <laughs> that is a very clever idea, but <laughs> it's okay. You got all these stalkers staring at you when you leave your room in the morning. That would be very disturbing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm going to try to do something like that, maybe. Yeah, that, that does sound like an interesting concept, because that's one of the things that a lot of people struggle with. Is they, uh, one game comes out, and it's a very successful game. I'm going to take Flappy Bird now for an example, or even something like Candy Crush or Clash of Clans. It comes out, it's a very successful game, and then 300 other developers decide to try and do the same because of the amount of profits those games generate. And... Um, People want original things, you know, when they, want, when they see a new game, they want something new instead of something being just a duplicate of another game. Like Call of Duty. <laughs> like Call of Duty, exactly. It's like, um, all of them are the same. <laughs> yeah. Like right, when so Watch, Watch Dogs came out, everyone bought it because it's something new. Yeah, it, it was a new concept. And in, and in the same way, you know, the one you just mentioned about uh, the window and stuff, that's actually a really cool idea, and I mean, it can be very successful. I would want to actually do that with you, but um, yeah, you're you're still doing school. You're still doing driving school with Mrs. Puff. Yep, Mrs. Puff. <laughs> I'm still terrorizing her. It's like, hey, Mrs. Puff, I came for my license. Okay, okay, I'm taking the day off early. That's what she always replies, and then she leaves. <laughs> Poor me. <laughs> yeah. But pst, something between us. I bought my license. Okay, this is where we end the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I still want to tell you about all my other sins and bribery. Okay, so um, <laughs> it's still not an hour long, so we've still got time for one or two more questions. Yeah. So um, <laughs> it's actually based on what you said of a workshop um, in Game Maker Studio and stuff. Um, I, I personally feel, and I want to know if you feel the same, like I personally feel that Steam Greenlight is opening a gateway for junk to be released on Steam. Um, because the way Steam Greenlight works is if enough traffic is directed to it, they don't really look at the yes and no votes. They look if enough attention is given to the game, um, they greenlight the game and then the developer releases it. Now the problem with that is a lot of people are releasing major, major junk and garbage on Greenlight. And like then all the, the friends... runner thing. Yeah, there we go, like accidental runner. Sorry if we're judging games here, but th this is personal opinions. But um, don't, don't take it personally, though. But the problem is a lot of people see it and they go, with this game is so mediocre, it's just terrible. And then um, they share the links of friends to show them how stupid this game is. And then because of that amount of sharing going on, then Steam sees a great amount of interest in that game and then they greenlight it. So... I feel like Greenlight does open a... It's, it's like a gateway for junk. Patrick? Yes? That, that's the smartest thing you've said in all your life. <gasps> Thank you! <laughs> um, I love you! 
So, yeah, uh, I think um, it's also to do with people voting for the lulls. Yeah, the, definitely. Yeah. And, um, yeah. <laughs> like one, one thing I noticed that was kind of funny is if you've got a really great game, you make a lot of money. If you've got a mediocre game, which is like if you've got a, a in between game, it's not good but it's not bad, then you yeah, generally like suffer. Like Simulator, kind of. Well, I mean, Goat Simulator was successful, but what I mean is like a, a very mediocre game, then you're going to get a, a fair amount of sales, but you're not really going to make a living from it. But if you make a game that is so terrible, like, do you, you remember Bad Rats? Yeah. But that game was so terrible that a lot of people started buying it for, for the joke, you know, sending it to friends to troll them. I was sending and it to you for the love. Yeah, <laughs> you sent it to me. What a troll. Um, for Christmas even. Yay! <laughs> Best present ever. Um, but anyway, the, the point is if you make a really terrible game, you can still make a big success because I'm pretty sure that developer pocketed several million dollars. Uh, I saw, I, you know all those links I sent you on Steam? Yeah, I didn't get time to look through them all. Um, do, do you know what? Do you know what they are? Uh, I don't hope it's bad rats too. Uh, no, 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 no. Um, it's the sometimes um, games getting right. pirated. Oh yes, I saw that. <laughs> um, it's it's a little sad, but you know, I'm I'm going to be honest with you. Here. In my previous year, I also pirated a few games. Uh, so, I mean, I can't stop it, and I, I did the same thing, so I can't judge them for doing it. So, But but some of the tags are like, um, sometimes success requires two, uh, I mean, two, yeah, not, not two, I'm uh, sorry, sometimes success requires sacrifice, and then it says uh, free download with multiplayer. <laughs> multiplayer, <okay. laughs> um, so Yeah, that's know. actually one of the things I got to warn everyone about is... A lot of those videos are actually um, generated by bots. So the moment a game gets released, those bots get the screenshots and it just starts getting uploaded in like a million times. And those links are actually links to some viruses and stuff. So you got to be careful when you look for cracked games. I actually downloaded um, the, the one with multiplayer. <laughs> <laughs> Did it work? <laughs> um, it has a crack file, a patch file and a setup file. Okay, read, well and it says it says read me first. Okay, Q. Why I need to disable my antifa? <laughs> Best grammar. <laughs> uh, if you are a gamer, you might know this. Since this is a cracked game, your antivirus may alert. Yeah, this is a virus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Uh, I'm so sorry. Said the thing is uh, the way my game is wrapped for Steam is, um, it's actually just a, a separate uh, executable. And uh, basically what it does is it just, that, that executable self just detects if your Steam is running because that's how the wrapper works. But um, it doesn't actually have any in-game verification to make sure it's on Steam or not. So a crack isn't actually always necessary. So you've got to be careful for all these no Steam patches and stuff when you do pirate my game. But please don't pirate my game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um... It was actually fun designing the trading cards, so you have to make a new game so I can design the trading card. Oh, yeah, right. There we go. I forgot to credit you. Uh, my good friend Red Bark here did design the trading cards, and it looks so awesome. Like, I love it. Thanks. Um, what do you think of the outro? Okay, yes. Um, based on that as well, he made an outro for my videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. which I you don't have to say that. Um, I'm just asking what do you think of it. Well, I mean, I'm the people are probably going to see it at the end of the video, so this is probably oh, almost the end of the video, so... Yeah, this is like, the video ended. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so, it's, it's a really cool outro. I'm going to be using it at the end of the video, so look forward to it. No, I don't look forward to it, because that means the video is going to end. <laughs> um, right. Well, this was a fun podcast. I hope to do it with you again. Um, yes, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> the time is up, I guess. So. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> okay, well, well, my voice is more up than the time in any way. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, I hope people um, will like this and they will name it because we don't have a name. <laughs> yes, actually, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but um, we'll call it the Nameless Podcast for now. Yeah, the Nameless Podcast. Name. No, I think someone used it already. 
Um, Probably. So, yeah, thank you, Patrick, for coming to my house. Oh, thank you. Uh, 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 no, wait, uh, I'm still under my rock. Oh, oh okay. Yes. Well, um, thanks for coming to the Krusty Krab. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is Patrick. Uh, and, <laughs> uh, yeah, thank yeah, you all right. for watching or listening. Yeah. Remember to SoundCloud or YouTube, and yeah. Yeah, remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done that yet. To both channels, obviously. Uh, go check out his channel. His channel has some stuff. Um, not great stuff, but it's stuff. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> He's calling me mediocre. And uh, yeah, goodbye. Goodbye. goodbye.